Yo! Video games. Dig, 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 dig. Right? No, if I got if I got like uber rich, I would go to the bank and I would get a million dollars cash. And then I'd slap someone in the face with it. <laughs> I don't know who. Whoever's oh, annoying me at the time. Just just I would hold it all in one hand and I just fucking <laughs> Have you seen like that Saudi <laughs> prince or whoever, where like that sh that female news reporter is trying to like interview him, probably on some human rights issue or something? And he just like holds a wad of cash over her head and just dribbles it over her head. Just... <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> he just walks away. What a douche! <laughs> oh man, there is nothing douchier than than those like fucking like Saudis with money, <laughs> like. I mean, who's that one guy, um, oh, it was in Canada recently, some, like, Iranian guy. He wrote, like, a book about, like, yes. how to pick up women, how to pick up any woman. Yeah, his name's Roosh or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and, a like, serious douche. like, a, like a, a woman's boxing team threatened to show up to his, uh, his... Gathering man, of Kings. Gathering of Kings. He's pro-rape. Yeah, he's pro-rape. <laughs> like, he, he said rape should be legal under certain circumstances. Ugh. If she wearing if she wearing if she wearing outfit like horse, she deserves it. She's asking for it. It should not be crime. Hey, <laughs> dude's so scummy. Like scummy. I wonder if you're in a room with him. Here comes the scum. Just, <laughs> here, yeah, here comes the scummy. Like you're in a room with him, you immediately have to take a shower. <laughs> not in front of him, but, though he thinks you should. No, dude is dude is a serious cunt. All right, so Christopher Nolan. You know, everyone loves Christopher Nolan, right? Yeah, I agree. Great, great film. Like, everyone likes his films. Roombie's, like, posters of every movie in her room. Loves Christopher Nolan. He's a light bulb filmmaker. Right? Just like Hitchcock. Right? So, he had that movie called Inception, where Dream Within a Dream. So, this game's all about being stuck in this dream. But then you go to sleep, and you dream. And you go into a dream while dreaming. I bet Nolan has a poster for this game. Inception. He's fucking incepting. And it's so close to friggin' Valentine's Day, like, you're gonna have to take Plan B. Blah. What? <laughs> you're being incepted. Oh. That's not true. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Ruby hates fucking Christopher Nolan, by the way. That's not true. What the fuck, man? By the way, Ruby <laughs> thinks he's, like, one of the most overrated directors ever. He's, uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's a light bulb filmmaker. In the moment, you watch a shit, and you're like, oh, fuck, yeah. But then you get home, you open the fridge, and the little light turns on, and you go, but wait, what about... And then the whole movie fucking unravels. Hitchcock was the same way. As a matter of fact, Hitchcock said that was the perfect film. A film should make you overlook all the bullshit until you get home, and you open the fridge, and you're about to grab whatever you want, fucking beer or something. You got 100 rupees. You're happy. See, when you find, like, 20 rubies, it's... Joy. Joy. In all caps. Fifty's like very nice. Hundred, you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> like they actually get lower and lower and lower. Dun, dun, dun. I've enjoyed most of Christopher Nolan's films that I've seen. In the moment, hell yeah, dude. And man, does he he knows how to work mu like music to make his like tone. Boom! Boom! But you can't say that in the moment you weren't like fuck Bwah! yeah, and then after you're just kind of like oh it's the same fucking French song over and over and over again at different <laughs> speeds. No, dude, Interstellar when they intentionally like made the soundtrack higher than the movie like upped it, and their moments were like dun, dun, or, like bombastic is like a ship is like docking or something like that yeah like even i and interstellar he was like it was on purpose i was like yeah i know it was on purpose it was, <laughs> it was obvious it, people were like oh i'm so into it max is sitting there just like oh space max, oh! No, no, and i'm just like is, i'm sitting there like oh. i like the i get it you, i get it cool, you dude. love 2001 here's the problem <clears throat> chris nolan max max doesn't love space he loves space movies <laughs> he doesn't like the actuality of space, which is fine. Most people only love it. But, like, Dan loves space, so he likes space movies. Max loves space movies, so he likes the idea of space. 
Like, you know, the idea that, you know, smells can kill you in space. <laughs> you know? What? NASA has a guy that his only job is to smell everything that will be going into space so that he knows, or they know, that the scent is not something that will kill you in a space environment. Oh. What chemicals give off a scent? He has paid lots of money for his fucking nose. Now, here's where you think about this. All personal items that astronauts bring, all CDs, all shit, they have to get them smelled by a guy. That means there is a female astronaut that knowingly had to turn in underwear to a dude and be like, all right, get to it. It's creepy. <laughs> Well, it's an ocarina, but you don't know how to play it. Max is a fake geek girl. <laughs> no. Oh, I love that picture. It's like this geek girl with like her hand up. She like like glasses, fake glasses on. She's like, I love. I read comics and shit. They're so interesting. Loki's like hot and stuff. Um, <laughs> no, we. So Elise and I have this. She's not really a friend. We both kind of on her, but. She's a mutual person from high school. She went to the Philippines and became a pop star. Wow. And then came home and tried to be a pop star here, but failed miserably. Um, and But still acts like she's a big deal pop star. You know, she's like, well, back in the Philippines where I'm famous, she has statuses that start like this. I had a stalker that tried to follow me from the Philippines. Thank God America didn't let him in. Wow. Okay. She started Twitch streaming. Um... And overnight, all of a sudden, all of her posts on, like, Twitter and Instagram all of a sudden was like, Oh, I love blah 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 comic number fucking, like, very specific shit. But yeah. then there's this gif of her, I guess, like, someone asking her, like, about the comic she said she loves. And she totally, she's just, it's just this gif of her going... <laughs> I know, oh my god, it's amazing. Yes. That guy had to, he has to smell underwear too, yeah. I have learned the ballad of the windfish. This song will always remain in your heart. Oh yeah, Gravity made space pretty terrifying, but Gravity isn't a movie about space. Gravity's just a movie that takes place in space. Song of Awakening, I wonder. If the windfish wakes up, will he make my wish come true? So musically, I should probably should point out, uh, this game is actually not done by series veteran Koji Kondo. What does it take to be... Oh, see, Arthur Doyle, what does it take to be a Philippine pop star? I have no idea. She has a great voice. She really does. Like, I'm not shitting on her for that. Like, that girl can sing. She's just also a, a supreme douche. Yeah. But what were you saying? I was saying this is not done by series veteran Koji Kondo. This is the soundtrack to this Zelda game. It was one of the few Zelda games... It was the only Zelda game for a very long time that didn't have music done by Koji Kondo. It was uh, done by Hip Tanaka. Hip Tanaka. Which actually reminds me, I didn't show you guys where the hidden... I, I have shown it before. only reason I'm not going to show it because it takes a while. You have to go into Richard's Villa and sit there for like a good three or so real-time minutes. And all of a sudden the musical change to Tanaka's song. Which is hidden in most of the video games he's composed. Yeah, cool. That's another Easter egg in this game. Okay, what the fuck was I doing? Um, so many eggs, bad cholesterol. Big. I didn't say I didn't say it was about space. I just previously said space is terrifying. Fair enough. Space, space movie. Also, space. I didn't like Space Odyssey. Two thousand one? Yeah. I don't like two thousand one. I think two thousand one's a boring well, ass film. I also uh, people get really mad at me because I say Stanley Kubrick doesn't make good movies. Stanley Kubrick makes the best movies. Stanley Kubrick has made one, maybe two genuinely good films. Stanley Kubrick is a 30-minute filmmaker. The first 30 minutes of his films are fucking amazing. They're masterful. The rest of the movie, skip it. You know what I mean? And if you think about it, every single movie that you remember, all your favorite parts are pretty generally, unless it's a very small part, from the first 30 minutes of the film. So what you're saying is Stanley Kubrick is a lot like... Sonic games in a way, <laughs> a where Sonic the games. first level in a Sonic game, even the bad Sonic games, the first levels are actually pretty good, pretty fun, but after that, the game just turns to shit. I mean, you know, like games like that tend to have that happen, though, right? Where it's basically the same damn thing. But even so, like, even even if it, you could have just repeated the first level over and over and would have been a better game. 
It's just that the Get first level in a lot of Sonic games is the best part of a lot of Sonic games. So you're saying Stanley Kubrick is the Sanic of, of film Sanic making. Kubrick. Sanic Kubrick. <laughs> Stanley Kubrick himself is basically Sonic. Do you guys like Takeshi Katana movies? Oh, Link! I see you have a nice stick. Can I borrow it? <laughs> You want, Taren wants to borrow my nice stick. That guy looks just like Mario. No, uh, you can't. <laughs> you can. Oh my god, give him the stick. No, don't give him the stick! <laughs> so what about the live-action Sonic movie? No, we're not talking about it again. Live-action Sonic movie is dead to me. Unless Nipples the Enchilada's in it. Holy buckles, it's Knuckles. <laughs> Holy buckles, it's Knuckles. You're not sure how it happened, but take it. See, this game... This game has more personality than Link to the Past. Like, you didn't... There were a couple moments in Link to the Past where it was, like... You know, genuinely, like, kind of, like, touching or charming where you talk to people. But, like, it's so few and far between. Like, you just go up to a sick kid in bed. Here, here's my net. You know, you go to, like, a guy under the bridge. Oh, Link, you're in trouble. Here, take my bottle. Um, like, the most touching thing was the, the, the flute boy. You know, oh, you know, he, he, that was, like, the, the coolest, like, touching part of the game. This game is just kind of, like, like, oozing charm and, like, instances with characters and NPCs all throughout it. Nintendo themselves has talked about this and said that the way this game handled other characters in the world influenced the rest of the Zelda series, like, from this point on. So, like, even Nintendo feels like this game was, like, a trendsetter. And it was just a fluke. Like that it got made. It was just a club. That's kind of nuts. Uh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, we've heard of the live action song. I don't know why everyone wants, like, what are you pieces of the live action song? It's all like, it's all like, it's all like, like, yeah, they're making a live action song. It's probably gonna be bad. I'm probably not gonna care. <laughs> the end. You bitch. Oh, you bitch. Little known fact, um, you can talk to these guys when they're in that weird, goofy state they're in. Um, and... What do they say? Ah, they say, I forget how to activate it in the American one, but... Um, anyways, in the German version, they actually make a condom joke. <laughs> they're having a little fun with that. They have the fun. A nice day. We need a song from Marin. Did that dog just talk? That bunny, yes. Did that bunny just talk? Yeah. Kill it. Ah! <laughs> it's the devil. It's funny, in this... Okay, so in the American version, see how that hippo, like, I come in the house, and it's standing up, and I walk in, and eh, go away. So in the Japanese version, it's actually holding, like, a dress around itself, like, like, holding it down. And when you walk in the house, it just does this. Yeah, I am Jules Danovich. The mermaid statue by the bay is my masterpiece. To tell you the truth, this work is not complete. The art, it's uh, difficult for you to grasp, is it not? So he's drawing a nude of her, of a hippo. And, you know, that's a joke that just got lost because Nintendo doesn't like... Nintendo doesn't like any uh, anything that's humorous with sex in their games. Nintendo. Hello, developers. <laughs> we are known for our humor. Who are known for your humor? German people? Yeah, man. Especially your cooking humor. You just love throwing things into ovens. <laughs> this guy. Don't you mean the Dutch? <laughs> <laughs> no, Germans. They're, no, I know. They made, an, they, <laughs> I made know. they made an art, man. They, they throw anything into an oven. Uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm not letting you guys go on that one. You did it to yourselves. You get you get more than more than a few lifetimes worth of horrible jokes aimed directly at your peoples. Favorite favorite comedian. Um, favorite comedians rather. Fuck, uh, I'm blanking on names now. Shit. Every time someone asks me this, like, I have comedians that I like, and then I just, like... I like Patton Oswald. Patton Oswald is definitely a big one. Zach Galifianakis is really good. 
I was talking. Louis CK is pretty. You know, good. I was talking to someone at work, and they He's saw kind of an they saw Zach Galifianakis at um at City Walk at performing once, and she said he was really weird. Like, his stand up was so different from how he is in the movies. Like oh, he's, his... he's almost like Mitch Hedberg, just like well, very he's, dry. He's a comedy nerd, and so he does like he does like super dry shit that yeah. makes other comedians laugh. Ah, and so like he had this whole show where he all he did was casually play the piano and ask people questions, and every time they told him an answer, didn't matter what the answer is, Billy, that's stupid. He did a whole five minute set. That's all he did. He just called them stupid. <laughs> Like, he'd be like, what do you do for a living? He's like, I'm a doctor, you save lives? Yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> like, fucking, you just do shit like that. Um, yeah, his, his stand-up is really dark. He's really good friends with Patton Oswalt, though. Um, what's, uh, fuck, what's the Australian guy that I really like? Why am I blanking on his name? Hugh Jackman. I mean, I like, <laughs> I like oh, the oh, things I I'd do to his little skinny leg. Anyway. Whoa, wait, <laughs> whoa, 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 down under. <laughs> um, fucking, no, why am I blanking on this fucking? Andy Kaufman? I do like Andy Kaufman, actually. Bill Burr, I like Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Dave Chappelle is funny. I like Dave Chappelle. Um, is Andy Kaufman dead or is he the best troll? I think he's dead, but... I also think that if anyone was going to pull a joke where they stay dead for 30 friggin' years, it'd be Andy Kaufman, because he is just ridiculous. Um, Jim Jeffries. I really like Jim Jeffries. I don't, uh, I don't even know who that is. What? Jim Jeffries. I don't know Jim Jeffries. I don't think I've heard that before. He had one of the greatest shows, too. Legit. Legit. With the guy in the wheelchair, or in, like, the wheelchair, he takes him to the whorehouse to get him. Oh, to... Jim yes. Jeffries. Jim Jeffries. <laughs> true story, okay. by the way. That's a true story? Yes. That's a really, true story. of all, like, the, the stand-up comedian shit that I would have thought would have been just, like, bullshit, that's a true story. Yep. True story. Like, the two guys, they made a documentary and stuff, and the two guys that he did that with talk about how they were so fucking upset at first. Well, not the guy in the wheelchair. The guy in the wheelchair thought it was hilarious that he told the story. The guy, the one brother was like, it was so fucked up that he told that story, but then was like, eh, I got over it. What's fucked up about it? That's like the greatest story ever. It's an amazing fucking story. Zombies. Jim Jeffries really is amazing. <laughs> Aha. So in this game, there are no bottles, there's no way to put fairies in the bottles, so if you die, you die. It's also one of the only Zelda games that actually has an alternate ending if you don't die, ever. But it makes it harder because you can't actually get fairies in bottles. The only thing you have is Crazy Tracy, which can hold one of her potions, which will bring you back from the dead. I'm Crazy Tracy, I got a little secret for sale. Pump you up! How Pump! Tubers for my little secret. You up! So you get this bottle, it's one, you get one of them. And you have to buy it again if you if you use it. Take effect when you lose all heart. Don't drop. Drop by again, big guy. Fucking rocks. Alright, what am I doing? Oh yeah, I gotta instigate the whole fucking Yarna Desert thing. Whoopi Goldberg is the only woman I've ever seen on Whose Line Is It Anyway who doesn't let the guys go and take over completely, and I appreciate that. Uh, she might still be a, a Cosby defender, though. So, she still is Cosby defender, yeah. Is she, is she still like, he's innocent. The thing is... Like, guys, you gotta let it go. Yes, he was like a very, you know... Important person in the early 80s for what he did, I guess, whatever. He's still a fucking serial rapist. Yeah. There's <sighs> a lot of smoke, a lot of fire. Hey, that looks great. I'll call it Link Plays with Bow Wow. Now get closer to Bow Wow. Link, get closer. Grr, grr, grr. 
much closer. Okay, I'm ready. Smile. Is there any proof Cosby did all those things? Other than an overwhelming amount of witnesses and victims? No, you're right. There's not. <laughs> They're all liars. Every single one of them just decided to come out and... Despite the fact that they can't go to trial, they can't actually sue them, they can't get anything out of it. But yeah. No proof. You know, people say shit I, just for money. Well, but they're not going to get any money out of it. There's 80 friggin' women came for it. How many, how many is the actual number? I don't know. Some it's ridiculous amount. But more <laughs> than that, it's not just the women that came for it. It's people that knew him that knew he did it came for it. And we're kind of like, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Ruby says she wanted to push her. <laughs> so I'm looking at a wizard. I'm just like... <laughs> 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 hey, we know someone who's 4'11". She, she doesn't want to get pushed over. She wants to get plowed over by someone we know. Yeah. Hey oh! <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's kind of obvious. No real spoiler there. Um... I can't go to May Village because of all the monsters. Oh, Marin is alright. Hi ho, hey you, is that possibly a honeycomb you have? I just ran out, will you swap it for a pineapple? Yes. You exchange thing for pineapple. It's not a sweet, but it is delicious. This is a cool looking fucking pineapple though. <laughs> Hi ho, yeah, I know. That tub of goo is asleep right in the way to Yarna Desert. Once he's asleep, he won't budge for a long time. But hey, take a little mirror and wake him up with her song. That slob would wake up with a jump if he heard her sing for sure. <laughs> Can Simmons just do all the voiceovers in this game, please? Yeah, all right. Um, oh, yeah, so... I'm not doing Marin. Mike wants me to play Deadpool in something, and I want to do a Deadpool versus his Wesker. But why? Because he already had, he already did his, he did Deadpool himself. I know, but he wants me to do a different version of Deadpool. <sighs> um, yeah, yeah. We need to make our Deadpool Taskmaster film. Okay. We were going to do a, one, like, here's a, here's a little assist me here history. One year for Evo, you know, because we did the one year where Doom and Wesker went to Evo, the whole hangover parody thing. Um, we were going to do a follow-up to that where it was going to be sort of a parody of Fear and Loathing with Deadpool and Taskmaster. Going okay. to Evo, uh, you know, a whole road trippy thingy, and it never fucking materialized. One because we had to give part of the Taskmaster costume back to its rightful owner. Um, then, like, I don't know, Mike like ripped the crotch or something on his Deadpool. I don't know <laughs> what the fuck happened. Something happened. So basically, we didn't even have the costumes anymore. Um, but yeah, really, uh, really wish we did that. Really, we still want to do that. I don't even know if we have to make it about Evo anymore. Well, there's all sorts of shit we want to do. Yeah. But. Cross rip. Text sounds. 